Hi everyone, thanks for checking out Q's Countdown here on the web. Tim Langlois alongside KJ Vaughn and Drew Carter previewing Syracuse's Elite Eight matchup against Virginia guys. And I still can't believe it that we're saying this, that Syracuse is playing in this Elite Eight matchup. Uh, crazy after the Gonzaga win. Crazy, uh, put in other synonyms, uh, shocking, <laughs> whatever you may say, I, I still don't know either. <laughs> Started from the bubble, now we're here. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, uh, Syracuse, they beat Gonzaga to get here on mm -hmm. Friday night, mm -hmm. and it was a close one. Syracuse had a comeback as they've been doing, and Jim Bay, I mentioned some of the other games earlier this season, they had to come back to beat Virginia Tech. Uh, that was one that Jim Bayon kept pointing to. Even the Pittsburgh game, they didn't win it, but they had a great comeback. And this one, they trailed late in the game, but they come back to win it 63-60. Michael Benege and Kyle Wilcher, the leading scorers for both sides, but it was the block from Tyler Lydon that was a big play Tyler in this one. Tyler Lydon, that, that block sealed it, and you know, it could go down as one of the best blocks in Syracuse history. Who knows, at least right now, it's very important because without it, they probably aren't here and they certainly, you know, it's a question at this point, but mm -hmm. it was a very interesting play. I thought it was a good job by him to step up and get that nice block. Well, how about the defense though, also for Syracuse? I mean, you had Wilcher and Sabonis for Gonzaga who looked unstoppable, but Syracuse just made the plays when they had to. Right, Kyle Wilcher couldn't miss in that first half. He was hitting shots from Steph Curry range from almost the, the sticker in, in the <laughs> middle of the court, but uh, he cooled down a little bit and a lot of it was due to Tyler Lydon and Tyler Roberson, you know, manning up down low. And we will hear from one of those guys, Tyler Lydon, as well as Jim Beheim, after the Syracuse win over Gonzaga. Coach was telling us, me and, me and Daywan, that we could have stepped up a lot more throughout the game. Uh, you know, he was getting on us early about that. They made a couple floaters. So it was something that we were conscious of trying to do better. And, uh, you know, I saw him split between the guards. So I tried to just, I either had to step up or, or stay back. And uh, I chose to make a play on the ball and try to step up. And, you know, luckily it paid out. Yeah. You know, I, th I think uh, it was a great basketball game. I, Gonzaga's got a, a tremendous team, and those two guys uh, are as good as anybody <coughs> that we've seen all year. Uh, I give these guys an unbelievable amount of credit. We were in a, a big hole with not that much time to go. We got a couple steals off the press, and uh, Mike just went after it and just had he wasn't going to be denied. Uh, getting that ball and putting it back in. But he's been he's been great for us all year. Um, of all the players I've ever coached, he's the most underrated player that, that I've ever coached. And Jibay, I'm talking there. Strong words about yeah. Michael Benajay, who had 20 points, but it was a little bit of a quiet fashion because he didn't shoot particularly well. But just like the whole team, it seemed like in this win, they made the plays when they had to, and he got that essentially game-winning basket. Yeah, and I think with Benege, you know, those those plays on the defensive end, you know, like you said, Tim, a little bit of a quiet night offensively, even though he still had 20 points, but on the defense, that's where he's key. And, you know, high praise from uh, the head man in, in Bayern. Right. Yeah, he's coached for 40 years, so <laughs> yeah. the most underrated player he's ever coached. That is high praise. Oh. It's hard to judge, you know, underrated, but we never talk about Michael Benege when we talk about the best guards mm -hmm. in the nation. You know, Malcolm Brogdon, Chris Dunn, Tyler Ulis. I think maybe he belongs in that conversation now. Well, he has a little bit of a chance to prove it even more as Syracuse faces Virginia on Sunday in the Elite Eight. Let's take a look at the last time these two teams met. That was down in Charlottesville back in January. The game had to get moved because of snow. They were supposed to play on Saturday afternoon. They played on Sunday night, and Syracuse was trailing by double digits at times in this game, but made it close to ultimately not enough to beat the Cavs. Michael Benege and Malachi Richardson both with big games in that ball game, but everyone else pretty quiet. Yeah, and you know, this is a tough environment down in Charlottesville. I think the movement of the game, you know, a lot of people don't really talk about it. That, that affects you when you're warming up, you have a game, you know, time set, and then very soon, relatively, maybe day, a couple days before it gets moved. I think that definitely affected them, but they were still able to keep it close. So that gives some Orange fans out there, you know, a little bit of a hope uh, going into the Elite Eight. Right. I mean, Malachi and Michael Benege just got no help in that mm -hmm. game. They combined for over 72% of Syracuse's mm -hmm. points. They're going to need a little more support from their teammates if they want to have a chance in this Elite Eight. Yeah, absolutely. And Virginia, on their side, they seem to have not really any huge weaknesses. They can shoot from outside and have a big presence down low. What are you guys looking at as far as X factors are concerned? Well, for me, the X factor, we've seen it this 
to this point in the tournament, it's the Syracuse zone defense. You know, watching the Dayton game, the Middle Tennessee game, you can say what you will about their opponents, but that defense, it was very active. It started with Cooney and Benege at the top, and man, when you have that pressure as a ball handler, it just completely ruins your rhythm. You can't even really look inside, or you can't look to really pass the ball, because you have to focus on keeping possession of it. So I think if that Syracuse defense can show up like it has to this point, I definitely think that they can pressure Virginia and maybe, maybe get a win. My X Factor is Franklin Howard, and that's because Malcolm Brogdon is the ACC Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year in the conference, too. I expect him to be guarding Michael Benege for the entire game. And b besides Benege, Syracuse doesn't really have a primary ball handler. Mm -hmm. Franklin Howard only played five minutes in the first matchup against Virginia. I think he should see at least triple that, and he needs to give some really good minutes to Jim Beheim and the Syracuse team. Certainly been seeing some more minutes here down the stretch of the season now. Our friends in the desert have Syracuse as eight and a half point underdogs in this matchup. Do you see Syracuse winning the game outright or just keeping it close or how do you see this one? Well, how, how about you go, you go first? I gotta go first on the last <laughs> one. Right, right, right. <laughs> Let me preface this pick, Tim, by saying, you know, Syracuse deserves to be here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are gonna say they've had some easy competition with Middle Tennessee State and Gonzaga, but they have, they've won every game they played, so they deserve mm -hmm. to be here. But they haven't seen a team like Virginia yet. I t in my eyes, Virginia is the best team in the country. And I just think they're on another level. They're top eight in the nation in offensive and defensive efficiency. They're very well coached. They have outstanding guard play in London Prentiss and Malcolm Brogdon. I just think they're going to be too much for Syracuse. Give me the Cavs in a low-scoring, low-paced affair. All right. Well, you know, I'm going to have to disagree with you, Drew. I know you got the statistics and everything, <laughs> but it's March and it's madness. We saw with Michigan State going down. You see it in this tournament. And when a team gets a belief, and I think Syracuse hammering Dayton, you know, hammering Middle Tennessee, mm -hmm. and then they handle, you know, Gonzaga, which they were, you know, um, they weren't favorites, and a lot of people liked Gonzaga in that game. You know, Gonzaga is not really sneaking up on anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. I think with that, they've got the momentum now. It's March. I think they can get the win. And like I said, it really is key to their defense. I think if they can keep it a low-scoring affair, I believe they can get the win. I have them uh, winning 66-64. Like I said, it's going to be a real uh, slugfest, another ACC matchup, kind of like the North Carolina-Virginia game mm -hmm. from the ACC championship game, I believe. Well, we'll see if Syracuse could be the first ever 10 seed to advance to the Final Four if they win. It's been three 11 seeds, but specifically a 10 seed, it's never happened. Syracuse and Virginia going at it. Six o'clock on Sunday is the game time for all our coverage here at Citrus TV. Make sure you're following us on Twitter and Facebook at Citrus TV Sports. We'll have all your coverage from Chicago. Gabriella Rusk and Stephen Conowitz are there. We'll also have Orange Press Pass after the game at 10 o'clock on Sunday nights. Be sure to tune in for that. For KJ and Drew, I'm Tim. Thanks for watching and enjoy the game.